In this video, I will show you about the various sound devices found in poetry. One way that poetry is distinct as a genre is because of how it sounds. Even if the words don't rhyme, you know you are hearing a poem by the way words are used to create a mood or reflect real life sounds. This is because poems are created using sound devices. In this video, you are going to learn about some of them. Alliteration, assonance, consonance, rhythm, and rhyme. Let's get the easier ones out of the way. You should be very familiar with rhyme and possibly onomatopoeia, where the word is the sound, the sound is the word, splash, slam, arg, whoa. Rhyme is simply when words end with the same sounds. Notice that these are sounds and not letters. For example, the words false and waltz both rhyme, but they use different letters to make the same sound. Usually words that rhyme in a poem do so at the end of the line of poetry, such as in little boy blue, come blow your horn, the sheeps in the meadow, the cows in the corn. But poets will also use rhymes even within the lines, like Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? Rhymes are often used in patterns or rhyme schemes to add a sense of symmetry to a poem. Look at the opening stanza of Robert Frost's The Road Not Taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler, Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. We look at rhyme schemes by using letters of the alphabet in order. Looking again at the poem, we assign the letter A to the first rhyme, wood, and every, and every end word that rhymes with wood receives the same letter. So stood and could. When we look at the second word, both, this word receives a B. And then all of the words that rhyme with both, likewise, get a B. So the rhyme scheme in this poem is said to be A, B, A, A, B. Notice that you can almost sing these lines, and there's something about music that is soothing to the soul. But there are also rhymes and rhythms that can be disturbing. Look at Poe's opening stanza of The Raven. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. This isn't quite as relaxing. The reason is this poem has an unusual rhythm. Rhythm is the beat of the poem. If the poem is musical, the rhythm is like the drums. There are upbeats and downbeats. Say this word aloud to yourself. Did it come out midnight? Could you switch it to make it sound like midnight? Not really. This is what is known as a trochee. It's when a word has a stressed syllable first and then an unstressed. Poe's poem is full of trochees. Weary, dreary, pondered, tapping, rapping. The effect in this poem actually creates the sound of a constant knocking. And that makes the listener tense. The opposite of a trochee is called an iam. You may be familiar with these from Shakespeare. He wrote a lot of iambic pentameter. This means there are five sets of am iams. An iam is a word with first an unstressed and then a stressed syllable. Words such as below, insist, because would all be considered iams. It's impossible to force the I am in the wrong direction. You would never say that you are going berserk or I will invite her to my party. 
Sonnets or love poems are written in iambic pentameter because they are meant to sound beautiful to the listener. Think of the opening stanza of the 16th sonnet by Shakespeare. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease shall help, hath all too short a date. Of course, you won't deliberately read it that way, but because the words have a natural rhythm, that rhythm can help establish the mood. But not all poems have rhyme. In fact, the vast majority don't. They are what are called free verse. So if there are no rhymes, how is the mood established? Or is it? Listen to this free verse poem by Atticus. What gives it a tone? I longed for real silence, the kind you can't find but stumble upon in a cabin somewhere on a lake without a moon, where you hear the cigarette burn and the candle flicker and your thoughts come alive to dance in the symphonies of your mind. It's how the poet uses sounds. When we refer to sounds in poems, we again don't look at letters. We designate them using slashes. We think of the sound you use to quiet someone. Shh. We write it like this between two dashes. But shh is made by multiple combinations of letters. Think of the words portion, illusion, mission. The same sound is made in all three by using different letter combinations. All sounds that are made by consonant letters, everything except A, E, I, O, and U, is considered consonants. Look at this example from Lewis Carroll's The Walrus and the Carpenter. The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. He did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright. And this was odd because it was the middle of the night. We actually have three different sounds that are represented by the letter S. S, SH, and Z. This is called consonants because the sounds occur at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end of the words. So, sun, best, this. Then you also have Z, as in was, his billows, and because. It replicates the sounds you would likely hear when you are on the ocean. You can hear the wind and the waves. Even the word billows, referring to the sails on a boat, create a visual or sound image at the same time. Assonance is similar to consonance, but refers to all the sounds that are represented by vowels. And there are a lot more than you think. And they're represented by unique characters. Even good and shoot have two different assonant sounds. In the same stanza from The Walrus and the Carpenter, there is a strong presence of the short uh, son, was, was, because. But there's also evidence of a long eye, shining, might, bright. The vowel sounds support the consonants because they are calming sounds to the listener. If rhymes are at the end, then alliteration is at the beginning. Alliteration is a sound device which concerns itself with words beginning with a consonant. The beautiful bouquet blossomed in the bright sun. Or, when the canary keeled over, the coal miners left the cave. Again, don't look at the letters. Listen for the sounds. They will be formed using different letters, but the sounds are what have the impact. The words with alliterative beginnings don't even have to be next to each other. 
their cumulative views adds shade to the poem. Depending on which sounds, the colors will change. Soft sounds, otherwise known as non-voiced, add light colors. They create soft, bright tones. They are pleasing to the ear, much like the ASMR sensations. Think the hummingbirds hovered in heavenly harmony. But strong voiced sounds like g, b, or d create darker or stronger tones in writing. The child bounced the ball at the backyard barbecue. Very often, alliterative sounds and consonants help to replicate the sounds of the activity that was described. Kwame Alexander has written a series of books of a story told in poems about a young man who loves to play basketball. Listen to this snip from his book. Filthy McNasty is a mythical man-child of rather dubious distinction, always agitating, combinating, and elevating his game. He dribbles, fakes, then takes the rock to the glass fast and on blast, but watch out when he shoots or you'll get schooled, fooled, uncooled. What comes to mind when you hear this? Can you tell this is about a great basketball player? How does he manage this? Using sound devices. Using sound devices, a poet can transport you to another place or time, and they can paint the picture using sound images to help bring you further into the poem. So be sure to listen as you read poetry.